somebody love. So you feel the speed of love, so you can have the church. So when I'm, when I'm loving you, I'm doing what's best for you, not what you desire. When I'm loving you, I'm giving you what you need, not what you desire. Talk to me here. So love has a purpose. I'm trying to cultivate something, something and use something in my life. I don't, I'm not loving you because you deserve it, because my house, every house may be at war all the time if you wait to the point you deserve to be loved. I'm at the right church here. If you wait for them to deserve, deserve to be loved, and they pass 12 years old, child leaves. Anybody with a child with 12 years old, say amen. If you wait for them to deserve, deserve to be loved, because when they get that age, they don't care about you, what you say, what you think. All they do is see themselves and what they want to do. Somebody say, amen. amen. You just did them. To take them to the store, buy them what they want, take them to the store, but someone say, amen. That's all you have to do. You don't understand. <laughs> but you continue to love them. Why? Because you're trying to cultivate something in them. You're trying to cultivate the environment of your house. So the purpose of you loving them is not that they deserve it. If you're in a relationship with a human being, you're married, you have a spouse, you have a mate, do they, do they really deserve your love? You don't love for that purpose because let me tell you something, you will get stuck, I feel like preaching. You will get stuck, Kandabuhusha. You have spirit of hatred will sneak into your life. And you're, listen, I'm listening carefully now. You will get stuck trying to wait for someone to deserve your love, and then your focus becomes what they're not doing instead of what they're doing. And before you know it, the environment of your house is all messed up. Because God, oh, God ain't ready for his mind to get rich in him. Oh God, because now you're judging everything they do, you're judging it to see if they deserve for you to tell them they look good, if they deserve you to do something for them, if they deserve you to cook for them, if they deserve you to buy them something. God doesn't know about me. I'm just talking about business here. You will get stuck, girl, trying to watch these people to see if they deserve your love. You get a love from that perspective because you'll never be able to love. And before you know it, you'll find yourself in a cocoon wondering what's wrong with you. Because now you live alone. You've been created to love. You want to love. Love is who you are. But now you're watching the object of your love and they don't qualify. So now you're stuck in a battle with yourself. Yeah. I don't want to be too much. I don't want to spend it up. And of course, dollars a clean. I don't want to spend it up. Somebody say amen. But if you don't be careful. Am I having y'all here? See, this is what you come to church for. If you don't be careful, you, that spirit of hatred will just sit in your house. Yes. And before you know it, I hear you good, I feel you, at least you're honest. Before you know it, you can't even love no more because your focus for the love is all wrong. That's wrong, that's wrong. And then you find yourself miserable, yes. not understanding why you're miserable, yeah. but you can't express who you really are because of who they are and what they're doing. Yes. Because you're loving for the wrong reason. Oh, oh, come on now, come on. It's going to get on you, and the hatred is going to be seen. You don't even recognize you're hating My until the Lord can give it to you. That's right. That's right. Oh, right. I'm helping somebody here, Mr. Cotton. What happens is when you stop loving, because the object of your love is not qualified in your eyes, now your whole environment is contaminated. And spirits are sitting around your house, all in your bedroom, all in your, all in your family room, waiting for opportunity to point out something to you. Because your focus, our focus becomes wrong. I'm testifying on what I'm living, I know what I'm talking about. When you put, when you make the object of your love, the reason for you loving, something is wrong. You and I love because love is a command. You and I love because love is necessary. You and I love because love has power. Yeah. Where love is, God is. Yeah. But you will never love because of who they are. Wow. It's going to take you to grow up. Because when the Lord hit me with this, I, it was, it's a struggle for me still today. But what, I, what, uh, what, what we have to do is overcome and cue. We got to go back and begin to pray for grace and begin to love again. I begin, oh, you already hear what I'm saying? To begin to respond to love, not feel love, to respond to love. Because sometimes, listen, a war can go up so thick. A love block can go up so thick. Can we talk here? Sometimes people continue to disappoint you, continue to hurt your feelings. Now, come on, talk to me. I know y'all live in perfect people, but me and my wife don't. And then they disappoint and hurt one another all the time. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, sometimes if you don't be careful, you a wall to go up. And you'll find yourself behind that wall. Oh, and you blame blaming the other one for everything. That's true. Yeah. 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 And 
And you shut yourself behind a wall. The only thing is, you can't go to nobody can't come in. But you get comfortable behind a wall, you stuck behind a wall, and you can, you can smell everything and step what's under your lip. 